We're here discussing how to mobilize and manage resources for Africa's development in a context where traditional external development finance is dwindling. international public finance, of course the multilateral development banks like the World Bank Group, mm -hmm. and what's most important, the private sector. And the private sector, um, that includes um, uh, large companies in the real economy, but that in particular includes those who can provide long-term finance. Uh, the example of where it's really government-driven is Rwanda. But if you look at the other countries, given the fact that, in fact, when we ask the question about how are donors' resources aligned to the development objectives and the programs of the countries, the response almost unanimously in the various countries is that the plans, anything fits into the plan. So we can, we can justify whatever we finance because it's in the plan, which basically speaks to the fact that these plans were not well prioritized and therefore um, anything that they are trying to do can be used. countries uh, just could not mobilize either the resources or the domestic institutional arrangements in the world to do what was required to achieve these goals. Urban finance is really fundamental to the transformation process because getting functional cities, smart cities, as centers of initiative and growth is a big part of the transformation story. And at the level of developing countries themselves, several African countries have floated sovereign bonds. When we're looking at the landscape of the ongoing this is a kind of chart showing the distribution of the ongoing These are 20 different countries and they are showing the distribution of the ongoing only if there is strong leadership and policy prioritizations for, for all these kind of dimensions. I know, that, I know that this is not an easy task, but governments have to be in the driving seat to make this 
ways development strategy finances and country coordination mechanisms work. Irrespective of how you are administering the All agreed on the need for centralization of the debt and aid management function, but within that there are several different models. And it was agreed as part of that that the generalization of system defects and strengths across countries is not necessarily terribly useful. It is useful to have an, a menu of issues that need to be looked at, but it was very strongly uh, asserted that it's important to diagnose specific country situations carefully. Every country has its strengths, it has its weaknesses, and uh, it's important not to proceed with a single template. The idea is that there are a number of financing that are also not going through the government anymore. So how are governments positioning themselves first to take account, I mean, advantage of what you would call the age of choice with the variety of options that are out there, euro bonds, the private sector and all that. And we wanted to understand better whether governments are actively, you know, pursuing and being strategic about this. And that's why we conducted those studies six countries.